React India. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hello. Uh, hey, everyone. I am Saurabh. I work in the front-end team of Razorpay. And um, I like building random things on GitHub. My career has Dan tweeted about this tool. And I still have no clue how we found it. I hope no one is making Dan write college assignments. But uh, I'm not here to talk about something like um, Jekyll and Hugo. But um, I ended up on the same problem, that it's not really integrating with MDX and the modern tooling. This is how most template engines work, where if I have index.xyz, um, and I have some template where I'm just passing JavaScript, then it outputs the HTML. And this is how um, you would see Liquid working, uh, which is the uh, template engine that uh, Jekyll uses, or EJS, Handlebars, um, all of them work this way. There's a fundamental problem with this, because um, if I want to do something like this, where um, those are to HTML that um, has a smaller learning curve, it has a flexibility of uh, the HTML, then something that integrates with modern tools like Astro does. So you can use um, any of the Markdown, MDX, Markdown, TypeScript, any of the tools that you would probably want to use in your um, ecosystem. And has a small smaller learning curve like vanilla HTML. And this is the interesting part that I'm going to talk about uh, eventually. And this is something I've been working on. And um, I'm, it's, it's really fun to talk about it here. And it's a project called Abel. Abel is a low-level, framework-agnostic, and wheat power static site generator. Um, I'm going to go and break these uh, statements down one by one. First thing is, Abel is a low-level static site generator. And what I exactly mean by that? I have this. Um, I, I, I really didn't want to start with the boilerplate code. So we are starting on a blank project. First, what I'm going to do is, normally, if you're starting with HTML, uh, you'll probably just go and create a HTML file. You'll maybe start, uh, have some code here. And I can put, hi, React India. And if you were to run this, you can just run it with uh, some static server, or any static server of your choice. With Apple, you don't really need any boilerplate or any complex configurations or any directory structures, you can just go and rename this to Abel. And I can, I'm just running this with npx right now, but we'll install it properly. I can go and run this with npx Abel dev, which will run a, a static dev server. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Normally, it's very fast when you're on normal internet, but this is just uh, <laughs> painful, yeah. Cool. So I have this thing. Yeah, this wasn't really the exciting part. This is still HTML. Uh, the exciting part is this, where I can go and write these curly braces and just put any math here. And that just becomes something that is on your build time. Um, so fundamentally, the only change that Abel here is making, uh, Abel is making, is um, it's just putting curly braces in your HTML, and then you can do dynamic things in HTML. And this fundamental change actually helps you do a lot of cool things. By the way, you can put any JavaScript here, so I can just do dot to uppercase, and yeah, this works. Um, let's say I want to import it from some other file. Um, I'll just say greet dot js, and I'll export a message from here. So hi, React. I can go here and import things. So I can go greet js. And this still works. Wow. Uh, now here's a cool part. We're using JavaScript here. Let's use TypeScript. I can go and rename this to TS, and this continues to work. So I will mix. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So if you look at this code, this is the code that you would understand even if you haven't seen the Abel code before, because it's just something that carry forwards from HTML. And even the curly braces, you're writing JavaScript, which is the another language that you would know when you're starting with them. Uh, slides. 
Next thing is Abel is a frame agnostic static search generator. Remember when I showed you that graph and said that there is an interactive sites and then there are static websites like blogs and um, documentation and we're not dealing with interactive part at all. I was like, we're totally dealing with that part. Uh, except we're not really dealing with e-commerce and dashboards because um, those are the cases where you'd probably need server-side rendering. Um, this just deals with static search generation. But even in static search generation, you would have things like an interactive code editor in your um, documentation sites, which you would want to build in a maybe a framework. Or if you're introducing this setup to your company, maybe you just want to use a framework that your company knows. So let's let's talk about this. Uh, I would just delete it. Cool. We're starting with blank browser again. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and create a normal V tab, which is a CSR app. It's not dealing with Abel at all. I'll go choose React, JavaScript. Okay, now I have to npm install again. Oh no. <laughs> uh, let's hope this works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll use this time. <laughs> hey. All right, we have NPM installed. I have to do this two more times. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we have a Vite app. This has nothing to do with Abel. It's just your normal Vite application. Um, I'll go here, 5173. And it's a Vite application um, that's client side rendered. So if I go to view, not inspect. If I go to view page source, you'll see that this route is empty because it's client side rendered. Um, let's so, I say, so let's do this. Let's pre-render it uh, with Abel. So first thing I'm going to do is npm install Abel latest save dev, which will just install the Abel. Um, I can go and change scripts here. So it's Vite right now, so let's just do this with Abel. I'll do Abel dev. This will be Abel generate or build, anything works. And one more change that we're doing is in vite.config.js, instead of importing from Vite, you can import from Abel. Uh, this will just install some of the uh, Abel Vite plugins. Uh, if you don't want to do this, you can also just import Vite plugin Abel and pass it as a plugin to Vite. But this will just take care of the sequence of things. And then I can go and turn this HTML into a uh, Abel te template. So this. Let's run this now. Uh, this wasn't the cool part either. <laughs> We're still doing the same thing, but with Abel. Uh, if you still look at the view page source, it's still an empty root. The change here is this is not an HTML file anymore. This is an Abel file. So you can do fun dynamic things in this. Like I can go and just import React DOM server from. I can also go and import our app, which is what we want to render. Uh, let's import React. Now I can go to this route and just call um, a React DOM server dot render to string. Render to string is a React function that takes the JSX, takes your React, and turns it into the initial HTML. I can also put app here. This will break, because um, it Abel doesn't understand JSX. To make Abel understand JSX, we can go here and go to the Abel configs. ES build, uh, this is the ES build that runs on the Abel block, so you can override it with any ES build configurations you want. In this case, I want loader to be JSX. 
and it's sort of working. Oh, wow. <laughs> still not done. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's still remaining, wait. <laughs> we just uh, rendered on um, initial HTML now, but we have two renders happening. Uh, we have create root that's rendering as well. This render becomes hydrate because rendering is already happening on HTML. You don't want to render on the client side again. I can change this to hydrate root. I hope this is how it is. This could happen for a while. OK, let me just check. Is this the correct way of using hydrate root? It is. We have an app here. I and you have that in get checkout, so I just do that. What is happening here though? Okay, anyway, get checkout. Just assume that it worked <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing differently. This is. <laughs> yeah, we, we did the same thing. We just turned this to Abel Dev, Abel Generate. Um, in index.html, we're taking render to string. Um, and here, I can use GSX. Yeah, this works. Um, so yeah, you can turn your client side rendered apps into Abel apps with like three, four changes. Um, you just have to change the scripts, and you can render on. Uh, ren you can call render to string on your Abel files. Then uh, another demo I had was there is one more cool part. I'll just check out this. When we talk about low level, we usually talk about the template engine itself. But there's another low level thing that we need, and that's routing. Um, a lot of times, static site generators or tools um, usually have these directory structures that you have to follow. But um, a lot of times, that becomes a limitation, because um, you can't really use um, the routing to libraries like React Router and um, uh, other routing libraries and frameworks. With AppBuild, you can actually go and your routing itself is low level, which means I have this index or Abel file like we had earlier. By default, it will go to the file system routing. If, where, if I create about.abel file, it will become a page. But if let's say you want to opt out of that directory structure routing thing, what you can do is create entry.build.js um, function and export a make routes. Uh, make routes API will just let you exp uh, return any array. In that array, I can pass path and I can pass render. Whenever you import an Abel function in JavaScript, it becomes 
a JavaScript function that returns HTML. So if I just run this. Uh, if I just run this and let's say I call console log log on this, I'm just returning blank. Yeah, you get HTML here. So Abel functions, when you import them in JavaScript function, they become HTML things. What this also means is this is not really expecting Abel. It's expecting HTML from you. So I can just go wild and write HTML as a string. So if you're someone who is anti-file system person, you can build your entire website in a JavaScript string literal. Please don't do that. <laughs> uh, but it also allows you to do cooler things. For example, I can just go and import a HTML file from here. So let's say index.html. And if I have an HTML file, I can go and say index.html. And I can just return that HTML from here. I can also just import EGS template call the EGS render method and return HTML. At the end, you just have to return HTML. You can return it however you want. Uh, one thing that we didn't do yet is we haven't called the build yet. We've just seen dev server. Let's call build and see what we get. Uh, whenever you build a build, it never really outputs any JavaScript. It's not dealing with client-side JavaScript at all. It's just dealing with HTML. So your um, output will not have any JavaScript unless you write it. And that's how it, Abel is framework agnostic. And by the way, we, we are all at a React conference, so we obviously know which is the best front-end framework. Vue.js. <laughs> no, it's React. <laughs> yeah, they're never calling me here. <laughs> Uh, next thing is Abel is weed power static site generator. Um, remember like uh, earlier how I said um, generating HTML becomes a limitation because um, you have to do things on your own. Abel is built on top of weed. It, in fact, Abel is majorly just a weed plugin. So you can actually just use dot Abel without really the weed setup. But um, weed power, being weed power, it lets you do some really cool things. You might be wondering, where are Abel plugins? I haven't talked about Abel plugins. Normally, you just um, you have a lot of static site generators which have to build their own plugin systems. Abel doesn't have any plugin system at all. There is nothing called Abel plugins. So how do you do things? Let's say you want to use sitemap. You use weak plugin sitemap. This is the existing plugin that you already have. It has nothing to do with Abel. I haven't built this. How to use Markdown? You use weak plugin MD to HTML. You just take Markdown, generate HTML, and you can put it here. This is the fun part. How do you use MDX? It uses the official Rollup MDX plugin. Um, you might be seeing Rollup here. Like, how did Rollup come? So Veet is compatible with a lot of Rollup plugins, and Abel is built on top of Veet. So Abel is compatible with a lot of uh, Rollup plugins, which means you can do cooler things. For example, um, here I'm just using the official MDX plugin. Let's say you want to do, you want to extend the MDX itself. I can go and use my rehype plugins inside this, because um, it's just MDX. I'm not rediscovering the wheel here. Um, this is still something that you would see in the official MDX documentation. Uh, another type of plugins that you might have seen in a lot of static site generators is source plugins, where um, you take the content from maybe WordPress or um, maybe Notion, Medium. You just want to bring content from somewhere. Remember we talked about MakeRouts API? MakeRouts API just removes that need itself, because um, I can go and just call some API and get my content here. And based on the content, I can generate routes. So for Abel, you don't really need files. Um, having files is just not a requirement. You can generate content on the go. And this just lets you remove the need for source plugins itself, because you can do these things without a plugin. And if you want, you can build like libraries on top of it, some higher level abstraction, like get WordPress content. But uh, yeah, you can do things without that. Ecosystem. Normally, when we talk about React, we say that how React has a big ecosystem and how, how it has libraries for everything. Abel's ecosystem is just all of JS ecosystem, because it, it doesn't really need its plugins. Um, its um, libraries are just independent of the Abel itself. Um, Abel doesn't really do much, which is the best part. Abel just exposes things to the right tools, so those tools can go ahead and do cooler things. And finally, 
Um, I've been working on V1 beta, and it's out now. You can go and um, scaffold project with npx create able. If you hate boilerplates, you can just go and create index.abel and um, run abel dev, and it, that too works. Um, you'll find the documentation on abeljs.org. And um, if you like abel, you can go start its GitHub. Um, this is my Twitter, um, that's Saurabh Dare, with extra E. There is one final thing. <laughs> Um, you've been seeing these slides, right? What if I tell you the slides themselves are built with Abel? <laughs> so let me just make my thank you slide. I haven't made it yet. Ooh. I didn't run the dev server. It's running on the earlier version. Yeah. That's my thank you slide. That's it. Thank you.